All right, here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the very first uh, episode of Night Witches, which is a game by Jason Morningstar about uh, Soviet-era World War II um, female fighter pilots, or excuse me, bomber pilots. Um, this entire game will be a... Um, I would try to I try to present the material as as um, as faithful and honorable as I can. Um, it's a it's a really fun game. I, I finished playing this in real life uh, for since since the summer. Um, this is one of my favorite role playing game experiences, and I can't wait to share this game uh, and like present it in like a really fun way uh, online with uh, for you guys to all to enjoy and uh, and to play with with my group here uh, that I uh, corralled in by. Um, by the draft so pretty much yeah so uh if those who don't oh, know first pick yeah <laughs> yeah you oh, different kind of draft shit yeah uh so for those who don't know my name's eric i'm eric Volgaris on the internet here and i am a part-time uh, rpg streamer i focus on one shots of shows trying to give rpgs uh like obscure or small press RPGs uh, chance in the spotlight, maybe f for us to maybe deconstruct what we like, what we didn't like, um, maybe how we would hack it, that kind of stuff for for whatever we would want. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, do that three times a week. I just finished season two, and this is sort of like we're starting this game in the break before season three begins, because uh, I I really want to take a break, but I also just love streaming and I wanted a long form game, so that's why I selected Night Witches, and that's why I'm so excited to hear to play it. But that's enough about me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you want to hear uh, what everyone else has to bring here to the table. So let's start over to the right here uh, with Arthur with AP Gaming. What's up? Yeah. I do a lot of what Eric does, except I don't do it as well. And, uh, oh, wow. You can find me on twitch.tv slash AP Gaming Real. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, all at AP Gaming Real. Uh, um, I would like to note... Your yeah, Mistborn show's fire, dog. I don't, I'm yeah, not really sure why you would Actually, say that. A lot of people really like... I think that most of the viewers are just Mistborn fans. They're not like tabletop RPG no. enthusiasts. They, they just, just love Brandon Sanderson so much. Yeah, they're, they're just free basin, like out of a spoon, just anything Sanderson related, man. You're just, you're just delivering it to them. Shows that are fire right now... I do a show with Eric Volgaris called Winner's Edge that is currently literally on fire. Uh, we have an episode coming up on Saturday. It's going to be insane. Uh, we have a play-by-post component that we do with the audience that has been excellent. We've got like a dozen people in there mixing it up. We can come and join in and uh, then watch Eric on Saturday as he's like, what are these people doing to the game? They destroyed the place that I live at. Yeah, like His every interaction sounds like that. Every day at work, it's just like I get look at my Skype channel and it's like, why are there dragons? <laughs> What's going on? Because uh, I, I can't I can't look at the chat uh, full time at work, so I, I just have to just hear the secondhand reports, and it's yeah. really funny. Yeah. So yeah, let's I'm, talk to I'm some excited. other people. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, let's let's keep going around the horn, uh, Mike. Hi, uh, I'm Mumbles on Twitch. And uh, I stream as often as I can because lately my sleep schedule has been a piece of crap. But uh, I'm getting that back. But I'm um, thinking I'm probably going to start uh, some Dark Souls in about a week. But I'm going to play through like the first one because I've never played any of the Dark Souls games. Oh, so. cool. Awesome. Um, awesome. You should. Um, I've been like, I've been like on hype train for that. Yeah. And Hyper Light Drifter kind of made me want to play more games like that. So. Yeah, you really want to. Um, you should emphasize and and do that sort of like I've never like blind playthrough stuff. Just like, yeah, blind playthrough. People, never play. uh, there's a lot of Dark Souls fans in the world just love to watch new players. They don't even spoil it for you. They just like they just laugh. Yeah, they just, just don't want to see. You all die. you do, all you do is just they watch you go left and they just go lol 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 lol. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh I'm I'm gonna start that soon, but I'm yeah. waiting for a little bit of the the Dark Souls three English release hype to drop. Awesome, cool. And then I'm gonna start playing all those games. Yeah. Good. In between that, probably Enter the Gungeon. Oh, cool! I've heard yes. good things about Enter the Gungeon. It's Looks a very fun. cool game. Yeah, awesome, awesome, uh, fantastic. And uh, I know as as we all hear, um, it says as character right now on the screen. That's because we haven't uh, announced who our characters are yet. That's intentional. So. 
Um, awesome. And last, but certainly not least, Nick. It's been it's been a, it's been too long, my friend. It's been too it long. It has I've been a days. month or so, but here I am returning to ruin your show, the establishment, and everything it stands yeah. for. Hello, yeah. I'm the only man to ever survive the trenches without a single shot of vodka, and I am here to ruin everything. I drop bombs. Yeah. Uh, I don't do a lot of what everyone else does. I'm trying to get into streaming now that I have this glorious new webcam. I might actually get into that and run a campaign that I've been working on for about five months. <laughs> And uh, I make games. That is what I do. Uh, eventually, I will have a website when I decide to fork over the cash to Squarespace. Because Squarespace yeah, yeah. asks a lot of me. They do. They ask you. They want everything. Yeah. Um. Cool. Awesome. Do we want to? Do we want to quickly before? Let's let's before we begin, so I can just modify the the titles here. How about how about let's go back in order? Uh, let's do reverse order. Sorry, with Nick. Uh, who is who? What is your character's name? Uh, I am Svetlana, uh, nicknamed Sveta Fomenkova. Okay. And, uh... I'm just gonna put Sveta as, uh, the name. Okay. How do you... Okay. And that's in Roll20 as well, so I can find that there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what, what, uh, what's your nature? Uh, I'm kind of stern, kind of quiet. I, um, I kind of affect a... I mean bird. Oh, oh, you mean, oh, okay. The, the playbooks are called natures in this ah, game. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm flying the owl currently. The owl. Awesome. Okay. And Mike, uh, what? what's your playbook? What's your nature? And what's your character's name? Sure. Uh, my character's name is Anna Anya Rapina Provrova. Um, and I am playing the pigeon is my nature. Awesome. And last but not least, Arthur. Unlike the rest of these fools, playing weak birds, birds which are not prey, I am playing Natasha Garlukovic, a.k.a. the witch. I am a raven. Awesome. I'll... Uh, Raven's probably my favorite, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be like an abattoir with all these name butcherings up in here. Yep, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not just fair warning everybody watching this show. I'm going to butcher the shit out of Slavic uh, languages, just words and like in in anything related. Sorry, it's just gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna try really hard to not, but. Uh, those are the breaks. So the reason why I'm limiting you guys as uh, describing your characters right now, because we're going to get ready to do that uh, in this next opening scene for the game. Okay? So let's head over to the game screen. Uh, never mind, don't worry, the combat section here just yet. So, uh, this is this is how the game... This is how the game will begin. Uh, so, everybody, imagine... Um, Imagine sort of like the, if this was a movie, uh, the black, like the title screen, Night Witches, uh, fades in and we, we see a, um, we see a Soviet city, uh, it's, it's, it's actually not as, it's not bombed out or anything like that, it's, it's actually full of just hustle and bustle, uh, dozens of planes flying in formation are going around overhead, um, and the sort of like establishing, like, bottom, uh, text, right, uh, it shows up saying, uh, Saratov, uh, February 1942 um, and Saratov is a, obviously a city in Russia um, we the darkened streets of, of this city are, are filled with soldiers um, but but you guys are all still right now civilians so like imagine you um, actually let's go around the table now and I'll describe what you guys are all wearing because you all will be wearing civilian garb uh, based on wherever you're from uh, and sort of your background uh, in your hand would be a uh, one of your your Red Army Air Force vouchers, uh, which is supposed to get you. And and right now, you guys are all kind of like in the city. You're next to the Volga River, and you guys are trying to find the boat that's supposed to take you uh, to ferry across the Volga River uh, over to the um, uh, the actual aerodome, which is sort of like the the training facility. So for I would like you guys to now go go in order, starting maybe with uh, with Nick. Uh, to, to to tell us a little bit what your character looks like. And, um... Sure. Um, so Sveta uh, is kind of a bit 
abnormally tall, not like Amazon-esque kind of thing, but probably about like 5'11", five, 5'6", five, uh, foot even. Um, she has a very kind of stern, cold face, like, she, she has very dead eyes, she has a very kind of like, flat affect about her, like, she's not... It's, it's not one of, like, despondence or boredom, but it's one of someone who's, like, definitely seen a lot of horror from the war already, who's probably lost a lot of family members, who's already um, just seen a lot of bad shit go down in, mm. like, a brief amount of time that the war's been going down. Um, and she's dressed, like, very plainly. She's got just, like, like a slate gray dress on that's very, maybe, like, wool, that's very kind of, like, tight against her, and she's wearing uh, maybe, like, a... Uh, a basic hat, nothing overly fancy for the time period, just kind of like a basic chapeau kind of cap thing. What kind of shoes are you wearing? Um, she, I'd probably be wearing just like basic flats. I don't think I'd be wearing anything fancy. No heels. No, nothing. Nothing to give any sort of like okay. pump to my appearance. I think. Sure. It's very, uh, very simple. Very, um... very, very um, gray. Just as a general word, just it, it's very gray. It's very kind of dour. It's very kind of somber, but it's it's very official and professional in a way. Okay. Cool. Um, what about uh, what about Arthur? What's so uh, Natasha? What is uh, what is Natasha wearing? Uh, you see, Natasha. She has uh, blonde hair combed over like this. She's a very beautiful woman with stern face hair pulled back into tight ponytail. She is wearing a traditional Russian serfa. It is a type of dress. It, it looks very nice on her. Lots of flower patterns and all of that. Looks very good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what a serfa is, but I, I assume it's sort of that uh, grandmother dress. You know what I mean? Yes. It's very like conservative. No. no. Also, she has a pair of American aviators. Aviators were invented in 1940 by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation. So you have, you're wearing capitalist sunglasses? Yes. Okay. All right. And um, interesting. I would note that. Okay. And, uh, and Anya. What is Anya wearing? Uh, Anya is um, wearing a um, okay, long, on, like past the knees, uh, floral gown. It's a floral pattern on it. Um, pretty simple dress, nothing too um, crazy or fancy. Um, but she's uh, she's a very like she's pretty short. Woman, she's probably about five foot five, um, and she she's probably about five five, and she's got like long red hair. Oh, red hair. Okay. All right. So you guys are all like very um, civilian, like looking. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sorry, by the way, the reason I was laughing is just I cannot believe the amount of disdain people have for me shaving my face. <laughs> It's true. You look very different. I like yeah, it, Eric. I, I Your hair is still very beautiful, though. Yeah, no complaint of mine. So, don't worry. I'll, the beard will grow back at some point. Okay. Eventually. All right. So, um, have you guys brought any luggage? I'll give you guys um, an answer for mm. the group. Or um, how, about, how about Anya? Anya, what, what luggage did you bring with you? Um, not much. Just like a... Uh, just like a small uh, one bag, like it's it's a bigger duff. It's like a small duffel bag, um, and uh, yeah, it's not not a lot. She uh, doesn't have. She probably has a couple changes of clothes if need be or things like that. But okay, and I'd like I think probably a couple books and some um, stuff to like write with. Mm -hmm. A journal and then stuff to for correspondence. Okay, so uh, it's a bright, crystal clear blue day uh, this this late February um, in in Saratov, 
and uh, you're kind of like you guys all start like funneling around near the uh, near the Volga River uh, for these fairies, and you see several other like men and women who are gonna, sort of dressed in um, civilian garb as well, and they all seem to be in like sort of the same uh, situation as you all, right? Uh, they all they all have like vouchers, and they're all kind of talking amongst themselves, and the the three of you. Uh, end up getting on the same ferry together, uh, going across the Volga. Um, like as you guys get to about like the middle part of the uh, of the river, uh, finally the the um, the patriotic, uh, what how would you call it? Um, like speeches played from megaphones that like throughout the uh, throughout the town have have finally like kind of like died down. You can kind of hear yourselves. Uh, you know, you're not you're no longer hearing the impassioned speeches by by Stalin and Marshal Zhukov uh, s- talking about how um, the Red Army will is is based by by your your blood and sweat and tears will drive the the Hitlerite bandits back, right? Uh, and and once again reclaim the glorious Soviet homeland. You know, like you like that stuff's just been going on and on. Um, Looking around in this in this river, going going to towards this the the aerodome, the the Engels uh, aerodome. Um, there's somebody that's very striking on on this ferry. Uh, so everyone is giving her a lot of space. Um, she she just stands out uh, amongst this crowd of maybe about there's probably about sixty people on this ferry. Um, all men and women alike, mostly women on this one. Uh, and this is a and this this woman is is dressed in in a splendid Soviet uniform adorned with several medals, as well as sky blue uh, shoulder shoulder boards. Uh, uh, epaulets. Epaulets. Thank you. I couldn't think of the the term. Um, you don't know as a civilian what that rank like what her rank is or what that signifies, but uh, in your heart of hearts, um, you all know you want to be just like her. And um, she uh, she takes notice of of Sveta, and um, she she comes over to you as everyone kind of like gives her space, uh, and she's she looks at you in 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 your garb, right? Like in your in your your simple gray uh, attire. Uh, she looks you over, and she says, uh, uh, "What what what kind of facial expression do you have?" Uh, it's, it's basically just like, it's not a grimace, it's not a scowl, it's just my face is just blank. It's like I've got yeah. a thousand yard stare at all times and my face is just flat. Yeah. Uh, I think she probably goes and looks at you and she's like, comrade, why, uh, why such an expression? Today should be a glorious day. You begin your training. Um, I think I, I carried on like a, a simple briefcase with me. That was my luggage. Mm-hmm. I think I, um... I kind of like instinctively as she comes to talk to me, I like move my right hand over the case to like a specific part where I'm like holding something in the case that's like very important to me. Um, and I kind of clutch it a little bit tighter to myself and I'm just like, I am not, I am not in the least bit upset, comrade. It's just war changes a woman. You, you know better than anyone. She laughs. She, she gives a boisterous laugh when you say that. That's war changes. Yes, for the better. Uh, for- we, uh, listen. You should you should be more lively. And she like taps you on the back, and she's like, uh, she's like. I kind of recoil a bit as she does, just like as a as a reflex kind of thing. Ah, you're cautious. That is that's quite a skill for a pilot. I turn back to her and I've and I'm like reflexes. I've had, I've had many years to to uh, adapt this skill. I've had enough run-ins to to know. And I need to be fast, and I need to be ready to move at the at the slightest motion. And and she, I think she, if you don't mind, I think she interrupts the last point. She's like, and you need to be prepared, uh, exactly like that, to kick those his, Hitlerite bandits right in the balls. And, um, I think I kind of like force a smile. Yeah, like it's just like the most like Mona Lisa, like just the t- just the ends of my lips kind of curl up, and I'm just like, yes, of course, yeah. And she's like, "Listen, I, I'm not all, I'm not all cheer and, and boister too, you know. Uh, like this war, the war has been quite bad. Uh, she kind of levels with you a little bit, right? Because um, she realizes that joking with you isn't really getting through. Um, she's like, 
well, like, fit our win our our glorious Soviet winters has stopped the 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 German advance fifty miles outside of Moscow, and and now these these springs uh the spring warmth has has drawn our counter attack in the mud, um so while while things might be uncertain, and and there is a reason for us to have a little bit of um straight face uh why don't uh why don't we try to personally to change that um i think uh i think at that i like i try to widen the grin to like this like really obnoxious toothy grin that's just like very obvious that i'm forcing it at that point i'm just like but of course comrade yeah after all we do have hitler rights to kill yeah. just in the most like feeding back her lines to her trying to be like the most kind of sardonic i can Comrade, uh, what is your name? Uh, a, uh, I think I kind of like hesitate for a second because like I've, I've, I feel like I've not been asked that for a while, and I'm just like Svetlana Fomenkova, comrade. Svetlana Fomenkova. Uh, and I know. Yeah, I'm Captain Evgenia Lobodeva. Lobodeva. I don't know how do you say it. <laughs> Lobodeva. Of of the five eighty eighth Night Bomber Regiment. It's it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I think I um I take the I take the right hand that I was using to clutch the suitcase and uh, I kind of like reach out to her and I'm just like the same to you. I wish we would have met on better circumstances at another time, maybe in another life. But it is good to meet you nonetheless. Yeah. The yeah I I think she probably met just sums up saying something like yeah uh but um. Russia gives us what we have, right? Exactly what we need, um, all the time. Uh, I think I think I kind of just like uh, mull that over for a second. I'm just like, yes, it does, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so I think I think by that point, um, the ferry sort of bumps up against the dock of Engels. Of, of Engels? I don't know Russian. Uh, and suddenly everyone is is all about business uh as soon as soon as that um like the dock comes down you hear the sounds of like horns uh and 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 men and and women are shouting as and, and like sort of like pushing up yelling at everyone to get off the the docks and and quit being lazy um you see uh in a quick flash um the captain uh evgenia kind of just get off the boat and everyone kind of gives you you room oh yeah i can give you i got gotcha. you okay so um you can see you can see down uh down the way is is the actual aerodome right the actual training facility uh, you see there are several trucks set up. Uh, people are getting in the trucks. You saw the captain get in get in sort of like the passenger seat of one of them. Um, a, uh, a mili- you guys might be trying to follow suit and while as a, uh, a military police officer of the uh, 4th Air um, Regiment uh, company, I guess, or 4th Air Army, um, comes, it's like kind of stops you guys and says, uh, no, 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 uh, you guys must walk. So, um, and, <laughs> yeah, so you guys are all going to have to walk the, uh, the four kilometers, um, over there. So I really hope you guys brought some nice, sensible shoes. I brought good thick socks and backpack. I am no fool. Do you want to put them on? You are assuming <clears throat> I don't already have good socks on. Oh, okay. You brought... I am no fool. Okay, you brought a backup one. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't. So, I'm walking in what I have. Um, <laughs> and I'm fine I think, I think I spot you out of the crowd just simply because you're a little bit shorter than everyone else, and I see that you're walking in heels. Um, and I kind of, like, sidle up to you after a moment. Like, I, I, I try to move a little bit faster than the normal pace of the crowd to get to you. And um, I think I lay a hand on your shoulder, and I'm just like, Comrade, you... You don't expect to walk four kilometers in those shoes, do you? I've walked farther. I don't mind. And uh, I kind of, I kind of stare down at them for a second. I stare back up at you, and I'm like, "Are you sure? I could offer you something better." No cost. Thank you. 
thank you for the kindness, but I'll be okay. Hmm. Uh, I think I nod kind of simply, and then I'm just like, whatever suits you. And then I kind of just like keep uh, try to move a little bit faster to kind of put uh, some space between us so it's not awkward. <laughs> yeah, that like we're walking in the same direction. We finish a conversation, and now yeah, we're, you know, it's like when you, you say you don't want my shoes. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of that situation when you say goodbye and you end up both walking the same path. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll hold back a little. Yeah, <laughs> you, you go. No, yeah, I I yeah, I allow so, you to go and um, continue trudging along in my. They're not like. They're not freaking like stilettos, but they're definitely heels. So I can't. So I can't emphasize enough just how filled the sky is with planes at this point. Um, you see, you see in close uh, flying formation the the brand new Yak One fighter planes that are like the the pride of the Soviet Army. Um, you see a couple like medium range bombers. I don't know the names. Uh, IL twos. Is that what they are? Uh, they're like dive bombers. Um, you see all these, like, various planes that are going very fast, and then, like, kind of drawing the, uh, following up the rear. Is that a, that's a rifle. It's a um, Mosin. Uh, okay. I own it. Okay. <laughs> you just Sorry, brought, you brought it? Okay. Um, and, and then kind of looking ridiculously out of date, uh, at the end of, of, like, this whole, like, parade of planes flying over, are these just dingy old, uh, biplanes. Uh, they they sound like um, really really turbocharged sewing machines uh, as they just putter around. Uh, they can't keep up with any other planes. Um, they just look ridiculously out of date. Just just horribly. Um, I think I kind of crack uh, a smile at the uh, the familiarity of the sound of them running. I think like it triggers some like older memories of like being back on a farm in my youth yeah from maybe like a decade ago or so so um we we eventually we 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 finally reach uh the main gate of the angles aerodome while there's a fourth air army military policeman uh kind of reviewing people's papers um who's the first person to um to be at the gate oh it is definitely me you know what they say first in first out and i am very intent on being the first person out of this military. Okay. Um, so the fourth, so the, this uh, this military policeman, um, he's sitting there. He's got like I don't know. He's got some sort of like pistol or whatever. Because I think I think military policemen are only people allowed to have guns on a military base. Um, he's he's just sitting there like near near the the front like chain link fence or or like metal, wooden palisade kind of fence, um, ushering people in and out. Um, he he reviews your papers, uh, Natasha, and uh, he's like, uh, "What was your name?" Was Natasha Gorlukovic? Just call me which Gorlukovic, Gorlukovic. Uh, it's like Natasha Gor. What's your rank? My rank is sergeant. Okay, so that's what I know. So, sergeant Natasha Gorlukovic uh, reports to. Gorlukovic. It's like, she she probably he probably deliberately mispronounces your name. <laughs> uh, report to logistic area six. Uh, request the following items. I will not uh, remember this. I will not repeat it. Service uniforms, flight boots, one week rations, and directions to the five eighty eighth trainee barracks. Now go. Yes, and, sir. Yeah. The next person. Who's the next person who gets in? Up. Uh, um. Because I'm already ahead of the pack, I probably arrive next. Okay. Um, sorry, just to clarify, do do you actually need our titles yet? I thought we were still civvies. Uh, no, you you technically that you are you're in your civilian stuff because oh, we're already enlisted. Yeah, you're already enlisted. Okay. All right. Just make yeah. Sure. You're you're right. going to basically flight school. Okay. So then, yes, I'm probably the next one up with my papers, and I probably kind of, like, um, I try to get them out of my briefcase, and I do so by, like, very carefully opening it and, like, sticking a hand in to make sure I don't uh, just, like, spill everything all over the slush and the uh, yeah. ice that's everywhere along the path. And uh, I very cordially hand them over to the uh, to the MP. Okay. Um, and you are, uh, you're, you're Sveta, right? Yes. So you, okay. Yeah. Uh 
Junior Lieutenant Svetlana Formenkova. Um, and uh, I kind of like I kind of stand up a little bit straighter. Yeah. Um, report to Sergeant Kateva in in logistics area six. Request the following items. I will not repeat them. Service uniforms, flight boots, one week's rations, and directions to the 588's trainees barracks. Now go. And uh, I kind of hurry off down the path without like a, another word or anything. Yeah. And and last but not least, uh, Anya. Mm-hmm. It's finally your turn in in the in the line. Maybe some other people went. Maybe not. Um, you the the fourth army uh, military policeman looks over your papers and says, "Ah, uh, oh shit! Are you are you sergeant or lieutenant?" I'm a lieutenant. Okay, so you are uh, junior. Ju- junior yeah, junior lieutenant uh, Anna Rapina Pero, uh, Pavrova. 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 Yeah, that extra V in there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So much fun. Rapina Pavrova. Uh, report report to Sergeant Kateva in Logistics Area 6 and request the following items. Uh, listen closely, I will not repeat myself. Service uniforms, flight boots, one week's rations, and directions to the 588's trainees barracks. And uh, after some fumbling around and uh, some, some vague directions, you guys are all uh, harried to a... Um, uh, sorry, to the logistics, uh, excuse me, logistics area. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, this is, you guys probably find it because someone is completely uh, yelling at uh, one of the people who went before you that was called to that area. Uh, you know, maybe some, like, some, I have, I have no, I know who it was. Uh, it was a small, it was a smallish looking girl um, look very confused. Um, who seems to be kind of like a loner. Like you don't you haven't really like you haven't seen her really talk much to anybody. Um, and she just gets completely bitched at by this lady, just just thoroughly eviscerated, uh, screaming at at, at her. Um, and she just kind of walks away empty-handed. Um, so who's the first person who wants to approach? Uh, oh, I'm this? definitely first person to approach. Okay. Uh, you see, you see a very, um, stern looking woman, uh, with sort of like a, she's just, she looks, looks like she's extremely, uh, been extremely stressed as of late. Um, she's like kind of on her last nerves. Uh, her out, her outfit is kind of, um, no longer proper. Uh, like the collar is like kind of like folded up and stuff. Um. You see, like, her sleeves are all rolled up. They're, like, covered in, like, ink and grease stains. Uh, a couple, like, cuts and bruises are around her arm, her hands and stuff. She just looks you up. She's like, oh, what do you want? Actually, you know what? Fuck that. I've seen your type before. Uh, you so, you know what? Don't tell me your name. Like, uh, know, knowing your type, you'll be you'll be down in fucking flames in, in, in less than two weeks here. So why bother? Like, why why would I bother getting to know you? I'm greatest pilot. Ha! <laughs> she she's fucking she she laughs. She's like, yeah, you're certainly a goner, lady. Uh, listen. Thank you, sir. Sure. Uh, did the, did the guard tell you to go pick up some service uniforms, flight boots, one week's rations, and directions to the five eight's trainees barracks? That is, in fact, exactly what he told me to do. Yeah, of course. That's where I just finished uh, bitching at that that last lady. Well, I, guess what? Uh, I have one of those things for you. And that is the directions to the barracks, because we don't have shit here for anything like that. You know what I do have? I have an endless supply of fucking shovels, so unless we can fly with fucking shovels, then then we're good to go, right? No, because you know why you no know what else I have here? I have you like I have no lady boots. I have I have nothing for that for you. Uh, service uniforms, forget about it. Uh, I just have I have airplanes and crates that need to be unpacked and unloaded, and I don't have the fucking time. So get out of here. Go find the shittiest place that a woman would never live, and that's where you're supposed to be. She's like, is this loud enough for the rest of us to overhear it? Oh yeah. Is that the order, yeah. man? She just yells at you. <laughs> like, I turn and follow the young woman who went in front of me. Yeah. Um. I think at that, I probably kind of sidestep my way out of whatever group is kind of congregated around this and try to just, like, scamper off after them as fast as I can. Oh, yeah, so you just ignore the line? You just yeah, go I'm with just, them? Like, yeah. yeah, I'm gone. All right, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I don't. I continue in line. Okay. 
You do? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think you might hear, um, the people behind you saying that, like, oh, we're like, you don't want to talk to, um, you don't want to talk to the sergeant, but apparently her, um, there's someone else here that could, that could get you set up with some Ben's uniforms if you wanted them. Um, so, <laughs> so you've, so, but, uh, but before you know it, uh, you're, you're in front, uh, face to face with the sergeant. And um, she just looks at you. She's like, "What do you want?" While she's like looking over, like obviously some sort of like ridiculous amount of inventory lists, like going through stuff. Um, I just, I just look her up and down and say, "I heard you mention that you needed un- help unpacking crates." Uh she she looks at you uh, quizzically, and. Um, She, what, how, what's your, what's your body size? Like, what do you look, do you look? I'm, I'm short. Uh, I'm like, I'm a shorter woman, but I'm, I'm not like skinny or, uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm like pretty average build. I'm actually, uh, you'd probably consider a pretty attractive woman. Okay. Uh, I was considering whether or not you would be, you're built for physical labor, right? Like you look like you could, not, you could handle I'm not it. Like, I'm not like the, okay. I'm not not built for but i'm not like huge and muscular Mm -hmm. so if anything she'd probably discount me because of my my like stature how short i am but like as far as physical like muscle on me that's i I don't look weak um so she uh she wants she she kind of hesitates when you ask that and suggests that uh you can help her unpack some things she's like No, just get going. And um, she, she, she really like gave it some thought though. But she's like, no, just just go find that the that shitty that shitty barracks that they have you, uh, that have have the five eighty eighth in. Um, you're not you're not sure. part of the 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 logistics. I don't feel like getting chewed out. Uh, get out of here. It's my okay. own problems. And I just I turn and go. And she like fake salutes to you, you know, because you are a junior lieutenant. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. So now we're gonna make it over to the actual barracks. Um. So, uh, it's funny because as you guys get to the barracks, um, there's actually a uh, um. She's. Hmm. How, how should I put it? So as you guys go over to the barracks, uh, obviously you guys look are kind of like confused a little bit, looking around, um, enduring a little bit of some cat calling by some like leather jacket, um, you know, pilots. Uh, you, you finally arrive, and um, there's there's a woman, no order than than any of you, um, who's there to greet you. She's kind of like has like a a small little like fold out table, kind of like near near this this shitty shed looking building. Um, and there, you can see there, there's a bunch of like various sizes of uniforms and there's like just a, like a pile of boots. Like they're not even sorted or anything like that. They're just a pile of boots, uh, next to it. And, um, yeah. So at, at this moment, um, she, she, she looks at you and she's like, uh, comrades, I'm, I'm senior Lieutenant Petrova. Uh, what are your names? Just typing that in. Sergeant Lukovic, ma'am. Uh, I think I kind of like, um, I'm not, again, I'm still kind of like not used to having to deal with people in military, so I'm just like, I, 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 I uh, jun- junior lieutenant, uh, uh, Sveta, and then I kind of like, oh shit, no, uh, uh, uh Svetlana. Yeah. Uh, junior Sve- lieutenant Anna Rapina Pavrova. Ah, Junior Lieutenant uh, Rapina Pavrova, um, Junior Lieutenant uh, Svetlana Formankova, and uh, Sergeant Natasha. Uh, I'm sorry, what was it? Gorlukovich? Gorlukovich, yes. Gorlukovich, yes. Uh, welcome to the 588th. Uh, we'll be. Uh, get, your, get your uniforms. 
and uh, go go. And I will once you once you have them assembled, I will take you to your bunks. And, um, I think I kind of just like grab the first one that looks to be about my size. Um, and then I also kind of just grab a a pair of boots off the stack without really even thinking about it. And I just kind of like just trying to hurry along as best as I can. Cool. Uh, go ahead and select one of the uh, uniform types for your character. Um, I think uh, I wanted to do a feminine uniform. So I assume what that means is it's very like form fitting. It's meant to fit the curves. It's meant to like yeah. Wait you might have yeah. You might have grabbed the last of the good ones. Yeah, I think I think I probably grabbed a decent one. That's maybe even a little bit small on me. So it probably hugs me a little little bit tighter than it probably should. Ooh. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was made for someone a few inches shorter than me. No, I just thought of the yeah. The, okay, no, I something else entirely from that. Thank you. Okay, uh, who else wants to grab a uniform? You all, you all got to grab a uniform. So this is just a I chance mean, for you to describe I what it looks like. Grab a uniform, the one that I grab. Now, now that I am letting my hair out of the braid and putting on uniform cap, we can tell that I have a very kind face and a very sensual body. The uniform. As we've already seen, the good uniforms are gone, so this one is a little bit too small for me, and perhaps emphasizes uh, my bust a little bit more than it should. Oh. I am probably I'm staring sure. daggers over there at Svita. I think I'm probably still just preening myself and kind of checking over every little sleeve and cuffling very procedurally. I'm sure I'm sure the leather uh, the leather jacket clad male uh, Men pilots were were certainly uh, hollering at you. Uh, I'm probably just ignoring every single word of it, just like just yeah. still dead face, still just like, but kind of pleased to just have a uniform, kind of pleased to have something that's kind of like mine. Mm. Um. So my playbook, uh, my nature gives me the option of none. Is it okay if I don't? If a, there isn't a uniform for me? Sure. That you grab okay. the last one. Yeah, I go yeah. through and I like I look through everything. I think I get a pair of like uh, some footwear, some boots, or something. But there aren't, there isn't a uniform in my size. Maybe because I'm so short or something like that. Okay, uh, maybe I think also there might be. Uh, she's she's talking to you while perhaps a little longer for everyone else as they go in there. Um, yeah, maybe I'm I'm just I, I'm the last person to grab stuff yeah. because. Some conversation. Uh, okay. she, maybe maybe it's actually like she looks at her watch and she's like, "Oh shit!" Uh, and she like whistles and she's like, uh, "You know, pilots assemble, right? Like it's time for like we're we're uh, we have to start our training sure. immediately." And she's like, "Just fall in line. Uh, we'll worry about it later." Um, fine. And so there's about uh, with you guys, there's about sixteen uh, women. What year is it again? Just so I oh, it's 1942. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, there's there's 16 of you uh, all together, uh, kind of lined up in whatever order uh, you could uh, assemble. Um, you may you may there might be some familiar faces in the crowd uh, here, like of of 16, um, maybe that you met like on the way here to um, to Saratov, or or maybe through like military training, but or otherwise they're kind of uh, strangers right now. Um, the senior lieutenant uh, starts kind of breaking down how the training is going to work. And she says, how, uh, we'll be dividing you into pilots and navigators based on aptitude, but, uh, but you will both have to be qualified for, for you have to be qualified for both seats uh, in, in order to pass. Uh, our, our planes are the PO2s, and uh, pilots sit in front and navigators sit in the back. Um, she she uh, takes over... Um, She takes you over to like I guess like a a, a row of the PO twos, all right, and uh, that are kind of like near the, uh, the near the runway, and um, she she kind of like like we kind of see like a, the montage of her like going over the plane like pointing out parts of it, and she's like the planes are very simple, uh, fuel and oil are gravity fe- are, are gravity fed, so don't fly upside down. Uh, our engine is air cooled. And uh, there's no oil filter. It's just a mesh screen uh, with, with, of course, open cockpits. Um, 
And she she looks at you all over and is like, while the, while the the machine might be simple, the flying is very difficult and many things can go wrong. Uh, flying at night especially is strange and challenging. Um, and she takes you all like one by one um, and starts kind of going through, like sitting down into the cockpit of this plane and being like, here, memorize the cockpit layout. You know, down to your left is the throttle, the fuel mix lever, the fuel cutoff switch, the carburetor heat and elevator trim, uh, the left dash here, switch bank, uh, the pilot, uh, the pitted heat, uh, master battery, panel lights, two magneto switches, gauges, fuel, air, uh, gauges, the fuel, altitude, airspeed, uh, heading, uh, altitude, climb rate, and engine RPM uh, to the right, uh, oil, uh, oil pressure and temperature, fuel pressure gauge, and cylinder temperature. Um, and finally, like, she just, like, quickly, like, goes through all of these. Uh, she's like, whew. So, um... You have you have exactly uh, one hour uh, before before uh, breakfast. Are there any questions? I don't speak up. Is this magneto switch properly aligned? I'm not sure it will put uh, proper spark into fuel air mixture. Uh, she looks at you. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, that one won't fly. Um, that oh, one, okay. that one, we're, we're taking care of. So, um, which plane, I guess you pointed, you pointed to a plane, um, the one that she's, she's oh, like the demo one. showing us stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just the display plane. Yeah. It's the display model. <laughs> um, it's like, ah, oh, well, it's the, uh, it's the uh, LX edition. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh. she, she, she finally, she straightens herself out. It's like, well, uh. Fine, then I'll go. So I've reviewed all of your files before you've gotten here, and you're all quite the mixed bag, aren't you? And um, I think at this point she's going to ask each of you guys an individual question. And um, this is sort of sort of like going to be like a slight backstory kind of loaded question about you. Um, so um, let's start with uh, with Sveta. So. Uh, Junior Lieutenant Sveta, um, whose funeral did you miss by volunteering for flight training? Um, is it alright if it's more than one? Yeah. Then I think I missed the funerals of uh, both of my brothers, who were about 19 and 20 respectively. What were their names? Uh, probably Ivan and Nico. Okay. Uh, did they die in the war? Yes, they did. I, I assume, like, they were soldiers or something? Um, and I don't mention it, but they were shot for cowardice. Hmm. That's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let's let's go to Junior Lieutenant Anya. Um, so Anya, who do you know in the Fourth Air Army Logistics and Supply Commissariat, and uh, what favor do you owe them? Hmm. I think that I. Hmm. Let's roll twenty. There it is. And look at that. I think that it is um I don't have a name, so if you want to give me a name, I can give you what who they how I know them. Sure. Uh male or female? Uh male. Uh Roman. Uh let's go with um Roman uh something Roman uh Petrova Lavrov Okay cool uh, I know them they're my they were my brother's uh best friend when we were growing up What favor do you owe them I owe them Shh. 
Um, I think it's it's. I think what ended up happening is, uh, they. Yeah, I think, I think that they broke up a like a bit of. They got in a bit of a tussle to like, kind of protect me, mm-hmm. uh, from some rowdy, handsy pilots. Oh. Okay. So like before before you flight school. Yeah, before flight school it was probably uh it was probably like while people were on leave or something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, sure. Night out on the town, right? Like, yeah, definitely. No, oh, I people dig in that. service going out and I they I think he got in like a a bar fight trying to protect me and I got really like pissy with him and like offended that he defended me even cuz I didn't feel like I needed it. Um, mm. Like it was one of those like I could have handled it myself, but oh. probably really did give do me a favor and help me out. Yeah, I dig so that. Kind of owe them, reluctantly owe them. And uh, awesome, Sergeant Natasha. Yes. What did you lie about on your regimental intake form? Ah, the identity of my father. Would you like to elaborate? I mean, technically, if I elaborate on this, I could be shot. <clears throat> oh, uh, well, I mean, pret- okay, pretend this is just to us as players. Oh, of course, why not? Uh, my father is Grigory Rasputin. Really? Yes. That's possible. Given the time frame. Is it? Oh, yeah, 19, 1918 or so? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, you you actually... So, like, that's, like, what your mom told you? Yes, to some extent. She did say that she slept with the mad monk. Okay. So, who did you put down as your father? Uh, I put down as just, my father... Just Nicholas the second. Just... <laughs> just so down my listed father's name was uh, uh, Rorik... Rorik. Rorik, Rorik. And that's not your last name? No. Okay. I'm just going to make a little star. Okay, cool. Um, so the major, um, she, she... She says, oh, uh, one more thing before before uh, Chow. Uh, the Major is waiting for you on the flight line. Uh, file out and then let's um, let's go to, and, and let's, you know, let's, let's move. And I think at that point um, we're going to go to our first break and uh, then we're going to come back and actually draw what angles looks like and, um, and go from there and start doing some missions. Okay. Mm-hmm. So thank you guys so much. That was the first hour of 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 Night Witches. So we'll see you in uh, in five minutes. <laughs>